Hi guys, it's Dave at Humble Trekker Channel. How are you doing today? Going to be doing a major rescue repair job on this uh, big black kook. I've taken this kooky from a buddy of mine. It's a cold steel uh, South Africa. It's kind of a blend between a kukri and a machete. We'll get into closer looks at it. But anyway, it's got some pretty uh, severe edge damage. So I'm going to use a TS Prof to uh, fix it up and turn this... Uh, rather sorry object into a real decent bit of steel hopefully. The damage on this blade is such that I can't go straight to the stones. I'm going to have to start off with a file and get off the worst of the edges in the rolling just to get a nice work area to actually go to the stones and start sharpening it. So I'll be using the files first and then as you see this is just a flat piece of steel doesn't have any distal taper or um, profiling to it so it's not really a based on a, it well it's based on a traditional cookery but it doesn't have the traditional cookery style it's more of a machete type device this is my uh, one and only cookery this is from the um, ex Gurkha cookery house here based in Nepal I really like it it's ex very long extremely heavy it's a great workout for the forearms chopping with this it's made out of uh, spring steel and you can see the profile and this has got in it this again isn't really a traditional one because it's got like the full tang and the slab sided handles rather than a traditional uh, round handle with a pommel on the end really nice bit of steel needs a bit of a care and tension itself but it's a worker so it doesn't have to be in perfect nick because i use it for chopping stuff up with the traditional uh, cookeries they come with a scabbard like this with the uh, sharpening steel and a little utility knife i forget what they're called and nice sheath which is made out of um buffalo i think it's water buffalo hide on the outside and wooden side it's a little bit susceptible to damp conditions it swells down or it shrinks down if it's the wrong atmospheric conditions and it squeezes the, uh, the blade in the, in the sheath. It's, you can actually adjust the, um, the tension with the lace in here. Fits in. This is a bit stiff. Fits in like that. Way too heavy to carry on the belt. I hang it over my shoulder. All right, just wanted to have a little discussion of my uh, last cookery there before I get to work on this. So we'll hit it with, a sh with the uh, files and then we'll start the sharpening process. And the way I'm going to sharpen it, I'm going to do it in sections so it changes its grind as it goes down. From the uh, this close up portion here, where you might be choking up and doing some fine carving or you want to do some slicing here. I'm going to do 22 degrees here from this portion up to this line then I'm going to go to 23 degrees as the belly starts to transition in then on this belly portion here portion here it's going to go to 24 and then right at the tip I'm going to make it a 25 degree um, so interesting little project we'll see what happens the worst of the damage is up here on the belly We've got chipping and rolling, general snagging, some small chips and there's kind of like some bigger chipping here. This is kind of suspicious. When you see a blade that rolls like this and this hasn't been smashed into concrete, uh, I've been told that this has just been used some, well, some chopping that you'd expect it to do uh, in a bush. And I'm a little bit suspicious that maybe this hasn't got the best of heat treats because of this, not so much the chipping, uh, but the rolling. But anyway, we'll try and sharpen it up and see what happens. Just filing this is very, very soft. That well, makes me even more suspicious about the heat treat. I'm getting very suspicious about this blade. It might be a lemon. It's just it's extremely soft. Sharpened the 22 and the 23 portions of the blade and a couple of observations to make. The grind 
obviously done by hand originally because it's very uneven on this side we've got a much shallower angle on the original bevel as you can see I'm just taking off putting on a secondary bevel here you can see where you see the polished steel if we look on the other side of the knife there's much more polished steel so the stone is touching much more of the original bevel therefore showing it's an uneven bevel this one side is much steeper in other words what's happening if we take a center line with the knife one side of the knife I've actually estimated it is about 22 originally and the other one shallower around 20 just finishing up the 24 area here this main portion with the finest stone here it appears to be coming up sharp be interesting to see if it stays sharp once it's been used If you're serious about sharpening your knives, it's good to have a magnifying glass. I've got one of these, uh, probably a kind of like a, I can't speak today, kind of like a jeweler's lens. And with this, when I examine the edge, you can get a really, really good view, both of your damaged edges, so you know what you've got to try and fix. And then once you've sharpened it, you can see if there's any jaggedness, any burring, or anything on it. So, lens, good to have. The 10 passes on the portion of the blade closest to the handle for the 22 and the 23. When I got a 24 and 25, because that's where the most damage was, I went at 12 passes. So let's inspect the, uh, the edge. I'm very, very happy with a visual inspection of the edge. There's one spot where there was very, one very deep gouge out the blade. I've not tried to repair that, I've just taken it down as best I can. It's, it would, I'd, I'd have to remove too much metal, it wouldn't be worth it. And actually, I'm just looking at that now. No, it's a hair, I thought it was a crack. Uh, you, you wouldn't notice it with just a casual look, but there is a one spot where it does, there is still a, a chip, but that's fine for this type of blade. I don't want to remove so much metal, I just want to get it sharpened. Good tool. Yeah, I really like that edge actually. The way visually, it's looking very nice. I'll strop it finally. My sloppy, my sloppy stropping. I've been criticised about my sloppy stropping in the comment section. Don't care. <coughs> the paper. We'll get into some uh, chopping in a second, so stick around. That's good enough for um, I want, what I want this blade to be, just a utility. Doesn't have to be razor sharp, not a wind skin. Anyway, it is sharp. Let's go to some chopping. Test the edge. See if it's going to be uh, good edge, good strong edge that'll last, or if it's going to roll and chip first time we use it. We'll kick off nice and gentle, a bit of light brush. It's going into the chopping block underneath too, so that's nice. Let's move it up a notch. Well, <laughs> move it up a notch. Move it up a few more millimetres. Looking good, right guys? It doesn't have a lot of weight behind it, so you have to put a lot of speed in doesn't have a lot of uh, momentum it's very much a machete in my opinion let's 
check out the edge. Hmm? I nearly cut my fucking fingers off there. Uh, looking good so far. Let's just go to some heavy duty shit. I don't know what this species of wood is, but it's really hard. So that's good enough for us. Oof. Nice deep cut in there. That should have rolled it if nothing else, but uh, edge looks good. Bam! Well, there's a knot there. Let me go for that knot again. Hear it? Did you hear the sound? Real thud. And we're just going straight on cross cuts. Try and damage it. So that's a good hard bit of wood there. That should hurt it. This doesn't damage a blade, nothing will. Uh, very good so far. No damage. I was expecting to get damaged actually, just from the, the feeling I got from sharpening it was, it was that it was going to be soft. But so far, so goody. A couple more hits on something interesting. So, this is a piece of, yeah, birch. We'll just go for some random downward chopping action. See what happens. Oh yeah. That's a good way of breaking your camera. That's good enough for me to call. I put a nice sharp edge on this with the TS Prof and it's a good sustainable long lasting edge too, I believe. I did have concerns about the heat treat on this from my initial inspection and uh, thoughts about it but I've done some heavy chopping there you just saw okay all bit 30 40 50 seconds worth but I slammed into that timber edge across the grain this is nice and hard if it was going to roll I mean if there was any issues with the heat treat I would have discovered it just with that uh, quick test there so I'll uh, polish this up maybe sharpen the point a little bit uh, get the uh, ink off it I've written on it and uh, give it a nice shine as far as I can with this black paint on it and the cold steel South Africa is ready to go back to my mate Pierre thanks for watching if you're a subscriber thanks for being a subscriber if you're not yet a subscriber and you've enjoyed this video uh, hit the subscribe button and then I'll see you all next time don't forget to like share leave a comment and uh, enjoy yourselves